as you check the Hey everyone, welcome back to The Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. And you got to have me in Fuego here. And we are back continuing our Shark Week coverage. And today we are going to go ahead and review the original Open Water. Now, this movie is not strictly a shark movie. It's... A little bit. Yeah, it's, <laughs> well, it's half kind of that. I mean, yeah. it's, it's what happens in the back half of the movie, basically. But yeah, this movie isn't strictly about that, but it's enough of it that I did want to go ahead and just cover it. We are actually going to skip Open Water 2 after this and then go right to 3 Cage Dive because Open Water 2 uh, has not much to do with sharks, if anything at all. It was originally a movie called Adrift that they just then co-opted and made Open Water 2 Adrift, just like they did the movie Cage Dive with uh, Open Water 3. So, the original Open Water is what we're here to discuss, which actually did quite well when it had its original run in the theater because it oh, yeah. had sort of a Blair Witch phenomenon going on. Yeah, and it was also based on a true story of these two people who actually got lost at sea and were never found, so, mm -hmm. yeah. So, the overall thoughts on this one are, for me, I'm still not that impressed with this movie. I get kind of bored at times. I do like some of it, but overall it's it's frustrating and the thing that still frustrates me to this day is the end of the movie. I really don't like how it ends and it's it's super annoying what happens with what, what one of the characters just decides to do. Yeah. And it's like <laughs> that's such a non-ending to me. So White that flag. <laughs> that affects me so much that I it kind of taints the rest of the movie for me and even the rest of the movie isn't Soup, like, yes, there are some times where you see some sharks in the same shot as them, but otherwise, the attack kind of the main attack takes place at night, and there's just flashes of lightning and stuff like that. And it's not, it's not super thrilling, it's just not. It's the movie is meant to make you afeard if you don't like the idea of being stranded at sea, which I certainly don't, but even at that, it's not super effective for me personally. So, overall. Not the hugest fan. What about you, Fuego? Yeah, not so much either, man. And more so because it's it's way less horror than just like straight up dramatic thriller, in my estimation. And there's just so much bickering and fighting amongst this couple that in turn escalates once they actually get stranded because, you know, there's the miscounting on the boat and all that other stuff. But I mean, as far as adapting a real world scenario goes, because I hadn't really read up too much about it, but they did a reenactment on 2020 of the actual couple getting lost. And so there's, this really was just dealing with real time stuff that they just dramatized a little bit. But performances by this couple that I believe star in it, produced it and shot it and directed it and everything, they're okay, and I can at least buy into their nitpickiness and whatnot, and just kind of, you know, the, the fighting and squabbling and everything that goes down. But aside from that, it's it's dull, you know, and not a lot happens, and there's some illogical things, as you mentioned already, especially in the third act. So, yeah, it's, uh, it was a phenomenon just because it was the right thing, right place, right time, right marketing. They made it for, what, like a, a little over $100,000, and then it sold at Sundance for over $2 million, made like $55 million worldwide, so it was... It was a phenomenon, but uh, that good? Nah, not really. So the story is essentially what we've already alluded to. There's a couple that are going on this scuba diving venture, and when they do, a a, a, a failure in the, the boat company's system of counting divers uh, leads them to be stranded out in the ocean uh, overnight, basically, over over one night, and uh, it's, uh, it, doesn't end well for them and it, again like you said even though it's based on a, on a true story it still just wasn't interesting enough for me there wasn't enough to fill the gap and and unfortunately I feel like that's a running theme in some of the shark movies we have to review regrettably <laughs> so um, they all become very samey when you watch them all back to back to back like this that's especially felt this past week open man. water <laughs> one open water three and the reef are all very 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 similar movies yeah. so it's uh, it's it's tough at times, but you have to be able to differentiate. And one of the ways to do that is to say that this is just not that intriguing of a tale. One of those three I like quite a bit. The other two, not so much. And this is one of the not so muches. I mean, story didn't do it for you either, right? No, not, not really. And I, I honestly have more interest in trying to seek out, if I can find it on the internet, that 2020 reenactment that was probably only around an hour, if not even less with commercials. You know, 40 something minutes, that's probably enough to tell this story. And also, 
the aftermath that happened in uh, Australia, which is where it actually took place. It was two Americans in Australia vacationing and how the entire scuba diving industry out there experienced so many concerns and you know just additional regulations and all this sort of stuff. So, And also the way that it happens in the story with the guy like taking the tallies and stuff and also from the dude who forgets his face mask and he's yeah. like, can I borrow somebody's face mask? And he's like very it's almost such a Jersey Shorey yeah. kind of thing. And the, the girl he ends up borrowing it from, I know I've seen her in other things. Uh, like comedic work, I can't think of it specifically, but uh, yeah, man, it's just it, it's it's drab. It's not that interesting, and it, if it can't even sustain like an eighty-minute runtime, yeah, it says a lot. So yeah, yeah. Uh, acting-wise, like Fuego also mentioned, the the couple are the writers and directors as well, and so <laughs> they they aren't the best in the world, especially the the husband. I like the the wife a little bit more than the husband, mm -hmm. but overall, they're just they're okay. They they do feel real at times, but then other times it's it's pretty over the top. And I don't know, it just they I didn't the whole movie is just kind of meh for me. I don't know. Yeah, I'm right there with you, man. Although I did forget that we uh, got to see the actress just sitting. That was very it. surprising I, too. Yeah. I was like, wow, I, I had totally do not forgot remember that. this. So, yeah, but, straight nudity early in the movie. Yeah, yeah exactly. But uh, I, I mean, besides that sort of just inner male of me and all that silliness, I mean, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're they're both just okay. You know, uh, it's, uh, you can feel the terror once like the jellyfish come into play and some other things, but uh, but but really, yeah, it, it, it's a lot to sustain for just two actors for the majority. And um, yeah, it just wasn't wasn't up to task for them. I, I kind of get the vibe those two, since they were this producing team that also started in it, they weren't like seasonally trained, like really mm -hmm. solid actors. No, they I, just I saw the it, opportunity yeah. to buy the rights to this story and adapt it and do something with it. And it paid off, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Mm. So outside of that, I mean, there's not really much of a score to speak of because yeah. it's, it's presented pretty raw. There is some interesting like tribally kind of stuff uh, during a few scenes, especially when like hope seems to be all but you know, drowned out, so to speak. And I don't know, there's this chanty kind of stuff that adds a little bit of menace as I was rewatching it that I'd totally forgotten about. But I mean, aside from that, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty like scoreless. Essentially. Pretty sparse. So, yeah. uh, the, uh, the effects though, again, I mean, there's not much by way of effects. There's some quick shots of sharks darting around underwater. And they did use real sharks in this from Yeah, yeah, there watching. was a time at which where they're in the water and you see some sharks swimming around them in the open water. That. Mm -hmm apparently was real but yep. it's uh it's not enough to make it thrilling or anything like that like that particular part is like ooh, okay that's a little nerve-wracking but everything else the sharks are all shot separately from them and it's just mm -hmm. editing trying to put them together and it's mm -hmm. not effective for me so yeah. effects wise there's it's not that they're bad it's just that they're not there yeah yeah i felt the tension much more so from you know just their situation instead of like the wildlife around them i guess so, yeah yeah, yeah. So I don't know, guys. I don't think there's a whole lot more to say about this one. That's going to do it for our thoughts on Open Water. Yeah. You can watch it if you really want. I mean, obviously, that's it's your prerogative, but it's not one I'd really recommend, yeah. quite honestly. Just wait for one of the other reviews coming up in the next couple of days, and you'll see which one of those three is the one you should watch. So we'll be back tomorrow with our review of Open Water 3 Cage Dive. Thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you to our patrons for supporting the channel. We greatly appreciate it, you guys. <laughs> and uh, until next time, I've been Cecil Lair. Oof, and, with a hiccup. And gracias, I've been Jaime Infuego. And remember, stay, stay scared. scared. I think that was a hiccup. Out of the water. <laughs>